हेलो एवरीवन हियर वी आर अगेन फॉर फाइनाइट एलिमेंट स्टेप और फाइनाइट एलिमेंट मेथड पार्ट फाइव एज पर अवर इनिशियल प्लान वी हैड प्लान टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम पार्ट वन पार्ट टू टिल पार्ट फोर बट इट द लास्ट पार्ट फोर आई हैड रियलाइज दैट स्टूडेंट आर टेकिंग मच इंटरेस्ट ऑन प्रॉब्लम दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम सो दे दे आर रिपोर्टिंग दैट वाइल सॉल्विंग द प्लेन टेस्ट प्रॉब्लम दे आर हैविंग सम इशू स्पेशली द नंबरिंग ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर एलिमेंट सो दैट इज वाई लाइक एज एक्सटेंशन ऑफ पार्ट फोर और एज ए पार्ट फाइव आई एम टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम स्पेशली हाउ टू नंबर और फाइंड आउट दी ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी एलिमेंट ओके एज यू नो दैट प्लेन ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम्स वी यूज टू फाइंड आउट द नोडल डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट Why we are trying to find out the nodal displacement of a particular point? Because we are using the truss in many applications, like especially in bridges. There, if you are, if there is a one bridge, and if certain amount of load is acting on that bridge, for example, uh, a trailer or truck is passing over uh, the bridge. At that point of time, that truck is exerting some kind of load. Because of that load, that Truss members of that bridge is going to deform, and their deformation we need to calculate before designing the actual bridge. That is why we are using or we are having problems on especially plane truss. For example, there is one case in this particular problem. There are three members. Each members has a fixed end, and common point is over there. At that common point, 10 kilonewton force is applied on the downward direction. Now. to solve this particular problem what we are trying to solve we would like to know the displacement at a particular node where force is acting then question arises how we will approach to this particular problem again uh, just recall the finite element method part 1 where we had discussed that we need to follow starting from step 1 to step 9 step 1 step 1 says firstly you need to discretize the whole domain into a small small part after that find out the local stiffness matrix once you have find out the local stiffness matrix then assemble into global sense and then uh, formulate those equation especially the stiffness matrix then uh, load field and external uh, Applied load on this particular equation and solve these equations. That will give the unknown variable or field variable, or uh, in this sense, the nodal displacement at particular point. Now, I have this particular truss. If I am having this truss, then firstly I need to number the element. I have already numbered number one, number two, number three. These numberings are random, or there is a particular sequence where we go from left upward. Then again, left upward means our initial position is over there. first element then again goes to um, come to down element number 2 and then element number 3 once we have performed the element numbering then first secondly i need to find out the exact node numbering now how to go for node numbering node numbering also follows the numbering of element for example here i have element 1 for element 1 i will start from node 1 this is node 1 and end with node number 2 over here correct then once i have numbered the element 1 then i'll come across element number 2 here because element 1 and 2 have having a common point element 1 we have already numbered or uh, given a particular number in this case element 1 for the common junction so here we we do not repeat the numbering of that particular point so for element 2 the numbering would be 1 and the next number because the last uh, uh, element number was 2 so next will be element number 3 now once we have completed for element 2 now i'll go to element number 3 element number 3 we had already numbered this particular common point at element 1 then we will go across other end last number was 3 then in this case it will be 4 you see the difference two types of numbering one number numbering is with circle and one is without circle you see the difference element or numbering with circle denoting the element number in this case element 1 2 3 and numbering without circle denoting the particular node number in this case element uh, sorry node 1 node 2 node 3 and node 4 now 
once we have completed step number one in step number two i need to find out the local stiffness matrix for local stiffness matrix you know the formula of local stiffness matrix it says something a by l and then you have a square matrix there there will be some terms sin cos a sin theta cos theta sin square theta cos square theta or sin theta cos theta it means what that sin theta cos theta is saying that you need to find out the that particular orientation of particular element to make this particular uh, process especially find out the local stiffness matrix there is a particular approach where you make a table in that table you make the following co column especially element number then angle of that element then orientation with reference to cos sin cos square sin square cos sin why i am writing or giving this particular column because these variable cos theta sin theta cos square theta uh, sin square theta cos theta sin theta you are going to insert over there if you have already uh, formulated a particular table based for each and every element with their own orientation and particular value while establishing the stiffness matrix for element 1 2 and 3 you will directly export these values from this table to that stiffness matrix to fill up this stiffness or uh, particular table you need to find out the orientation of each and every element because it's all about orientation truss member or uh, may be oriented horizontally vertically or any particular angle so how to find a particular angle for a particular element there is a specific approach which says that firstly you figure it out or establish a global reference frame for this particular problem global reference frame means i need to figure it out or make a reference like x and y from from this end this is 0 0 or you say 1 2 2 3 now what I am going to say uh, do that this is my global reference x y with reference to global reference I am seeing each and every element and their orientation and trying to fill this particular table now what what is the initial step firstly locate the reference x y reference now this is your global numbering 1 2 what you are uh, like your uh, step would be that replace this particular one and second node to your respective local matrix or local element in this case i have element number one over here i need to find out the orientation of this particular element with reference to global reference axis global reference axis now if i export or move this particular reference axis from here to this particular lo location because i have already mentioned this is element number one it means with reference to my global axis element one would be this and this would be second call it one dash two dash this is local element numbering this is one dash two dash that particular reference axis now you need to find out the orientation of this particular member of dress with reference to global it means what would be the angle you know the diff uh, angle element 1 and element 2 in between element 3 and orientation of element 3 with reference to element 2 is 45 degrees and uh, degree and element 1 with reference to 3 is again 45 it means the total orientation would be 45 this and 45 this means 90 degree so we find out the orientation of element 1 is 90 degree so here i'll put 90 degree now coming back to element number second now again you need to export or impose this particular reference especially uh, your x-axis from this uh, this location to this location. So once i have inserted over there then this is my one dash two dash global reference x-axis and this is element number element number three in that case because they are both parallel it means angle is zero degree now coming back to third again you need to export this one dash two dash from here to this location now you figure out the angle from this axis to this element number three is already given 45 it means it's 45 once you have calculated the theta term for each and every member of this stress you will fill up this uh, sin theta cos theta or rest values you know the uh, specific values or having calculator you can like fill this particular table now after 
calculating the theta values and having this particular values now you will formulate this stiffness matrix especially local stiffness matrix which we call k1 k2 k3 their terms would be e a l these parameter would be already uh, say given to do to you on the problem now using these particular values you need to fill this particular stiffness matrix especially local for element 1 element 2 and element 3 after that formulate the global stiffness matrix now now we'll uh, like try another problem let's take example of this here you are having three members one is oriented at 45 degree second is on horizontal direction and one spring member at 90 degree now again to solve this particular problem what we are trying to solve this is mobile mobile point because it's not fixed it is fixed over here 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 but at this point it is not uh, fixed it means i need to find out or our objective is to find out the displacement at this particular node so how will we, we will go for this particular problem firstly you need to number the element in this case we have numbered one two three or you can give your own numbering because i have already said that that uh, standard procedure is go from top to upward sorry bottom to upward then again uh, come back to bottom and then go upward in this case we have given one two three now uh, once you have given the node numbering sorry element numbering now you will proceed for node numbering because it's element number one and this is the removable point so that is why i am giving this element node one for element one node one node two then coming back to second it is common point node is already allocated one so it would be three why three because last numbering was till two now for element number three initial node is one and final node would be four why four because last numbering especially for element two was three that is why for element three it would be four once we have given the no element numbering one two three and perform the uh, location or annotation of node numbering now again i need to find out what this table why this table because these parameter is going to be filled in global stiffness matrix which you uh, need to supply for solving this particular problem so again what we are going to do again we will make a global difference i have created over there global difference one dash two dash one dash two dash now you need to export this particular one dash two dash at a point where node number one is fixed now node number one is over there it means i need to like export this particular x axis especially one dash two dash from here to here this is uh, basically imaginary axis you see this is one dash and this is two dash now you need to find out the orientation with reference to one dash two dash and that orientation would be always anti-clockwise direction not clockwise or otherwise only anti-clockwise direction it means this is your reference now for element number one i need to find out the orientation you see at node one force is acting at 25 kilo newton i need to find out the orientation anti-clockwise direction with reference to this means i need to find out this angle what would be with the this particular angle you know th from the reference this is if this is going to be x axis then the orientation of element 1 is 45 degree from anti clockwise direction okay and from uh, if you see the uh, in other ways this is 90 degree because 25 km is applying over there and this if this is 90 degree this is zero then it be, it means that this particular element is oriented at 45 with reference to vertical it means this is 90 plus 45 90 plus 45 you need to allocate for element number one now once you have completed for element number one again come to element number two this is our reference frame one dash two dash i need to find out angle from one dash point to next element next node especially node so what would be the angle because i am trying to figure it out in anti-clockwise direction that is why if it is uh, 90 then again it's, it's 180 it means our angle would be 180 if i am uh, taking anti-clockwise direction that means that angle is positive if i am trying to if i'll take uh, say clockwise direction in that case your angle would be minus 180 because the sign of this particular uh, orientation is very much important otherwise your 
deformation value is going to be incorrect. For element number 3, again this is 180, this is 90, mean 180 plus 90 degree. Once you have find out the orientation of element 1, 2, 3 using global difference frame, then just fill out these uh, particular points, especially let us suppose cos, cos 180, sin 180, then responding terms. Once you have filled out this particular table, now your job is very much easy because you need to export these values over there and E A by L, these are the known parameter for uh, solving the plane truss. You will uh, find out the local stiffness matrix. Once you have find out the local stiffness matrix, now form the global form or global stiffness matrix, then uh, find out the uh, displacement vector or unknown field, then apply uh, and then find out the external force you see the only specific issue with this particular problem is that here you are having a spring element this is a particular link uh, made of a particular material but here it's not a solid link but it's a spring so what will be the difference between this particular element member and this member is only if you find if you're trying to find out the this particular members means element number three is global uh, sorry local difference global stiffness matrix local stiffness matrix in that case the or you f you have already figured out the orientation it means you have this parameter inside parameter and but this value ea by l this is also known as stiffness for a particular sp spring it means if you are having an uh, plane truss problem and you are having a spring and a spring constant is given you have figured it out the orientation of each and every other element and found out the local stiffness matrix and you need to find out the local stiffness matrix for a spring element you need to fill out the internal element of this local stiffness matrix only to find out the ea by l because it's not a solid member but it's spring so ea by l you know each and every parameter for other cases but for this case you don't know that is why ea by l is also called as k it means k value is already given to you for solving this particular problem now in summary in plain truss problem a specific issue is with orientation how to solve or uh, calculate the global stiffness matrix you need to make a particular table with element numbering and the orientation of that uh, element to make or fill out this particular table you need to find out the orientation of each and every number firstly uh, number the element then number the nodes after that make a global difference frame call it 1 dash 2 dash now to find out any specific elements orientation export this 1 dash 2 dash to your uh, initial location 1 or 1 dash 2 dash for this case this is one this is uh, your uh, local uh, one you need to export from here to here then you will fi figure it out this it this is called one dash two dash for first element it's 40, 90 degree because 40, 40, 45 plus 45 90 for second it's zero because parallel and for third this in this way once you, you have calculated this particular table now fill this internal members using these uh, values and ea by l is already given to you um, by different parameter find out this for this particular problem where you have a spring element for that case only difference is that while uh, for, uh, like finding out the local stiffness matrix you need to supply ea by l as k which is given a particular particular uh, spring element now once you have calculated each and everything go and fill up the local stiffness matrix then assemble them find out the this your nodal displacement vector and force vector then now apply the boundary condition and solve this particular problem in this way the plane truss problem only issue is that find out the orientation that's all thank you